The truth about cheating. Ladies, how does monogamy benefit you and when did you last cheat? It's simple to believe that everyone who cheats is merely untrustworthy, but the truth is that cheating happens considerably more frequently than most of us think. There's no shortage of temptation for people in monogamous relationships, whether it's in the office or on the internet. In our culture, cheating rates have hardly altered. Even though statistics differ, it has been found that almost 60% of men and over 45% of women will cheat at some point during their relationships. The main issue that bothers people after all the questions are the incentive behind cheating. Studies on the subject of cheating vary. Some claim that the dopamine released as a result of lying and hiding causes the high. Some claim that it's only a chance. However, there are as many excuses for cheating as there are as individuals. Hello and welcome. In today's video, we'll discuss some reasons why people love to cheat while in a relationship which is getting common day by day. If you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the post notifications. Let's dive right into the video. Prior to 200 years ago, people typically got married to pass down their property or their sheep as evidence of their genetic monogamy. The monogamy was required to prevent intra-family infidelity and to maintain male lineage control of the land. Today, we marry for love and want as much as to share property. Although, for more than half of us, love withers on the vine before we're even close to death or old age. The aim for married couples is that we share that desire and that love until death. Some choose serial monogamy after remarriage, committing to multiple spouses. In other words, lying is a widespread practice. A disservice is done to everyone if the entire phenomenon of cheating is attributed to a small number of unavoidable bad apples. We don't have any open discussions on why people cheat, which makes it more difficult for those who cheat to understand their acts, make the appropriate amends, and strive to do better in the future. Nearly half of married persons in our culture file for divorce. Perhaps up to one-third of these marriages result in divorce due to infidelity. Does that imply that our culture does not value monogamy? Some individuals make the mistake of assuming that adultery is a sign of a fundamental issue in a marriage or a committed relationship, oblivious to the more pressing question of whether the ordinary person is even capable of monogamy. Maybe just 50% of us are truly terrible at selecting relationships. It's difficult to commit to the same person for the rest of your life. Long-term committed relationships require partners to develop a variety of challenging interpersonal skills, including the ability to tolerate dissatisfaction, self-control, patience, empathy, and perhaps, most importantly, the daily decision to stay together. Marriage is not a solemn commitment to another person. It's a daily commitment to oneself to persevere through the bad times. For the first time ever, while laying in bed next to our partners, we can cheat on them using our laptops and mobile gadgets. Cheating is thus ambiguous. But what really constitutes cheating, and when does it actually violate that oath? According to researchers, people don't always cheat for the reason we may believe. Men cheat in relationships and connections, and women cheat for sex. According to the research I did for this book, contrary to popular belief, men commit adultery solely for sexual reason, whereas women commit adultery for romantic reasons. Identifying your motivations for cheating, what you plan to gain from it, and if those motivations limit reconciliation, is important if you are the unfaithful partner in your relationship. Possible connections between biology and the desire to cheat exist. The studies, however, are modest, and there are other instances in which biology has little or no influence on what we do. The connection between infidelity and biology and psychology is one that is frequently brought up. But if you set your expectations and boundaries before entering into any long-term relationships, both you and your partners will be aware of where you stand. This enables you to make deliberate choices for your relationship. The first kind of cheater is a compulsive one who puts careful attention to their actions. They struggle with impulse control, empathy, and social awareness. They're likely to cheat in their first relationship and in many subsequent relationships. However, there are some young, naive individuals that cheat in their early years, albeit this is not usually the case. They have the ability to change and can gain knowledge, though their connections and experience. Sometimes they might not be dishonest. They might have thought their first relationship was more informal and had loser limits, but they might have felt and acted differently in a relationship they thought was more serious. However, there may be other ways to cheat, although you shouldn't always base your judgments on the stereotyped cheating you see portrayed in Hollywood. There are several basic qualities that unfaithful people tend to have in common. The following warning signs may indicate that your partner is up to something if they are right in front of you. Number one, cheaters know how to lie and know how to lie well. If you've ever been duped by cheaters' phony assurances and weak justifications for changing plans, don't feel bad because they're so uncannily adept at it, simple to accomplish. Sometimes, in order to hide their actions later in the relationship, cheaters set up future falsehoods in advance. They can start off by telling you in advance that their workload at work has suddenly grown due to reorganization or staff turnover. 
These are lies, of course, so they will have a compelling tale to tell when they're not with you. The fact that cheats not only know what to say, but also how to say it and act so that their body language doesn't reveal a lie makes them much more unsettling. Number two, they tend to rationalize their behavior, despite whether it's wrong or right. You're familiar with the saying, it's not you, it's me. Cheaters frequently view things in other ways. The phrase, my partner doesn't like to do what I like to do in bed, is one that cheaters frequently use, or our relationship isn't sexually or emotionally gratifying, so I need to find it somewhere else. Nothing a cheater does is their fault, but the moment they begin explaining their affair to you out loud, it can be simple or to forget that they did it voluntarily. Your partner may be attempting to get inside your head and make you blame yourself for their needing to cheat once they start making you doubt yourself. Number three, cheaters are impulsive and can't resist taking that risk despite what it might cost them. Bullies and cheaters both thrive on power and are driven to danger. However, their actions reflect something ingrained in them that is quite strong. In actuality, cheaters are very insecure people who feel they are imperfect, unlovable, furious, and ironically robbed of something that they desperately needed in life as a youngster, says the author. In the other words, it's them and not you. Number four, they aren't necessarily unavailable, but they aren't exactly available either. Every new relationship goes through a honeymoon period where everything is perfect and you can't keep your hands off one another. All of that eventually passes, but usually there's still some kind of spark burning, even though you may not be showing each other as much love or attention as you did at the beginning of it all. However, if your partner begins having secret relationships with other people, don't be shocked if remoteness is the first indication of infidelity. Number five, they act suspicious of you. Cheaters may frequently develop a pattern of monitoring you closely or perhaps acting aggressively as a result. It's likely that your partner is projecting if they suddenly become too jealous and protective of you. It's only logical for them to presume you may also break the trust between you two, she said. They may thus become very nosy and possessive. So what do you think about the truth about cheating? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you soon with the next video, and thank you so much for watching.